and here are surprises for Japanese shipping and Japanese bases. As fast as our bases could be made ready to meet her, Japan was moving eastwards to the Solomons, to New Guinea and the Gilbert Islands, trying to mass her forces, racing against time, hoping to catch us unprepared. The attack on Pearl Harbor and the fall of Singapore had destroyed the Allied plan for sea power in the Pacific. But American, Australian and New Zealand planes are in the air against Japan to smash her schemes for the conquest of the Pacific. Audacious schemes conceived greatly, but depending on sea and air superiority. Not only are our planes flying out of Espirito Santo, our fighter planes are over other islands. Here the natives daily watch the planes of the Royal New Zealand Air Force, flown by young New Zealanders with whom they share the destiny of the Pacific. The natives have willingly helped with the building of the base, Another base for defense and attack. Here too, work on the planes is constant work done by skilled men trained in New Zealand, but now living on a battle station. They relish the life despite the heat. There's a chance ahead they've been waiting for. Patrol work is the daily job. Off go Kitty Hawks, taken over from the Americans. While our island bases are being built up, the enemy's every move is watched and marked. Every base is another link in the semicircle of steel being forged around New Zealand, Australia, and the supply routes from America. In Fiji, a Singapore flying boat, slow and cumbersome in the air, not built for the speed of modern aerial warfare, can still be put to use. So we began. But more and more planes were on the way. Too, aerodrome construction and the building of runways was a job that called for men and machines, skill and hard work. But the task was not beyond New Zealand engineers. With modern machinery sent from New Zealand and native labour readily available, the job is just another of those gigantic constructions at which these engineers have excelled. As the work goes on, supplies, vital supplies for the New Zealand planes are assembled. The planes, the men, the bombs and the bases are another milestone in New Zealand's growing share in the Pacific War. Again, the natives lend a hand, eager to help men whose ideas of labor and discipline are not enforced with a whip. These natives share in the fighting too. On Guadalcanal, the Fijians have shown their skill as jungle fighters. From our island bases now, 
Liberator bombers, flying fortresses and Catalinas can roar down the runways to hunt the Jap, to hold him on his island bases, to pierce his defenses, to isolate and destroy him. But he has yet to feel the real strength of the United Nations. At the fighting French possession of New Caledonia, 1,000 miles north of New Zealand, the first unit of the RNZAF were bomber reconnaissance squadrons. It was no small task assembling and transporting many hundreds of miles the whole organization for operational bases. It was done successfully, the result of splendid cooperation between America and New Zealand. Setting up these bases and organizing them from the operational rooms down to good surroundings was another side of the work. In this war in the air above the palms of the island-studded Pacific, it is flying range that's important, the effective flying range of bombing planes. Had the enemy seized this island base of New Caledonia, they would have been able to cover half the Pacific Ocean within striking distance of Sydney and Auckland. At first, the Jap moved fast, but American, Australian and New Zealand forces were out on the sea and in the air to meet him. As months went by, Japan's tide of conquest moved more and more slowly. But he was bombing New Guinea and thrusting towards Australia. At Guadalcanal, United States forces first met his southward drive and stopped it. Successes by the United States Navy proved she'd recovered from the crippling blows of Pearl Harbor. On land, the United States Marines smashed their way into the steaming jungle to drive him back. Capture of this aerodrome, Henderson Field, gave us a base for air attack. Now we could strike at the Jap on the sea, on the land, and from the air. Sharing in the air attack is a squadron of the Royal New Zealand Air Force. This is their camp, far removed from the well-laid-out stations on which they lived and trained in New Zealand. But training is over. Now it's the real thing. And these are active service conditions. Once these men look neat and smart, swinging down the street in trim blue uniforms on parade, now they can prove they're smart enough to outwit, outfly, and outfight the Jap. The sticky heat of these islands is not going to stop them. Rolling in comes one of their Hudsons, just back from her first bombing operation. And here are the crew. The planes must be kept in fighting trim for the enemy is struggling to move. He is given to striking like lightning and with suicidal daring when he's cornered. But as our fighting pilots know, he can be beaten. By holding the sea lanes open, our supplies of war increase. Our island bases are bases for attack as well as defense. From these bases, we will carry the war right to the shores of Japan. War came to the Pacific, the peaceful ocean, to peoples who love freedom as they love the sun. The power-mad Japanese brought war to the Pacific. The strength and skill, the courage and faith of men who master the skies is helping to end it. <laughs> 